Good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to a special event, one where the best of all disciplines come to the dirt. It's the Wark Chili Bowl Nationals from the virtual Chili Bowl and the Tulsa Expo Center with live coverage right here on the K-10 bueno Racing Network. My name is Kenneth Bueno, joined alongside by Francisco Bacchial in the booth. We will bring you all the action as we inch further to the real Chili Bowl in just a matter of time. Going to get this virtual one up and away. And Francisco, I'll turn to you here in the commentary box just inside of this virtual Tosa Expo. The Chili Bowl, of course, a nationwide phenomenon every January with some of the best coming here to showcase their talents and to race for their glory. But here on the virtual side, it may not be at the widest scope, but it is still a marquee event nonetheless here. Thanks for having me on here, Kenneth. And as you mentioned, the Tulsa Expo Center hosting the Chili Bowl Nationals that are going on tonight in the real life side. And of course, we're here in the virtual side to bring the War Chili Bowl Nationals here tonight. We're going to be in for some exciting racing. You and I have come accustomed to some dirt action that we cover over on the AMB Outscore Quick Time Series. But of course, this is with the dirt midget car. So different um, a type of car that we're going to be seeing attacking the racetrack tonight. So we could expect some different things. And not to mention this racetrack, as you've been able to see, it's inside a stadium. It's not exposed to sunlight, so it's artificial, air conditioned, and it's going to make a lot different challenges that we'll see from normal racetracks. And of course, as you're looking inside of the Tulsa Expo Center, we'll get a better look at it, where these Chillable Nationals are held. Of course, previously mentioned the Tulsa Expo Center down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the site of the Chili Bowl Nationals every single year. And can't really necessarily look down into the track because it is a building, but still just a reference of where we are. And of course, the track length is about one-fourth of a mile. And of course, the Chili Bowl Nationals began and had their inaugural event back in 1987. So there has been a lot of history in the real-life Chili Bowl here, Francisco. And of course, on the iRacing side, have been recently more into the iRacing Chili Bowl as a Super Session main event uh, just a couple of weeks back in, in December where iRacing had their, their big event. And, of course, they've been holding it, I believe, ever since 2018. That's when the Dirt Midgets were actually introduced onto the iRacing platform. But nonetheless, we're getting into our practice session, which is just weighing down to about two seconds and is about to take down to zero. We're about to head over into the qualifying session it'll be about three minutes so we'll have uh, three minutes for drivers each and every one of them to get out onto the track and perform the best way they can we'll pull up the ticker for you right on the top in the hat right at the top of the screen you can see where everybody currently lists in practice but that will reset as we head over into qualifying three minutes have just kicked off we're starting our qualifying here but francisco we'll, we'll turn to you of course uh, us going to recap before we get things started here Lots of heats to get underway. And, of course, our 50-lap feature event here for the War Chili Bowl Nationals. And, of course, we've covered dirt just a little bit. We've covered the Amy Outdoors Quick Time Spit Car Series. So, at this point, we're accustomed to seeing heat racing. We're accustomed to seeing the features and seeing certain drivers make it in. But, very big challenge here. Lots of heat spread out. And only two drivers will make it in in each and every heat. So, it's going to pose a very, very big challenge for these guys. And especially the challenge that comes with racing this car at this specific track. Yeah, you mentioned it. We actually have six heat heats here tonight, and we have a C main, B main, and A main. The heats are eight laps, so we will have only the top two in each heat advance to the main. And then in the C main and B main, one driver from each will advance, bringing our total car count up to 17. If uh, uh, That's, I believe, the amount we will have for the feature race here tonight, 17 drivers, if my math is correct. And, tw and we have 24 currently in the session meaning we will have several drivers going home so it's nothing short of working hard for trying to make the race here tonight and you know this being the chili bowl we're covering this exactly five days after covering the the um, knoxville nationals for start last sunday until wednesday so well, this has been a big week in terms of dirt racing action that we you and i have been covering and of course uh, the sprint car series that we've been covering over the past couple of weeks that continues on and of course that was the last time we covered any sort of dirt event, it seems good that we're back on the dirt side of things as opposed to going on the asphalt oval side, which we've seen just a bunch of times here on the Cable Racing Network. But also, nonetheless, the timing that this race is in. Of course, the Chili Bowl itself is going on or has been going on for the past couple weeks. And this week especially where the Chili Bowl is actually tonight, I believe at about 8.30 p.m. Eastern, the real stuff's going to go down and we're going to have the feature event and all the heats and the mains and all that stuff. And going to have the real life drivers take over this track on the real side and perform the way they have. Obviously, very, very big names from NASCAR, from 
from various disciplines of racing, from dirt racing itself, and pretty much a lot of drivers around the spectrum that have tried to find their way in. And as you can see from one of the scenic cameras, that's the infamous ramp that goes down from the trailers and all the drivers in their garage, per se, and going on to the ramp that goes onto this one fourth of a mile racetrack. Got about half a minute left in this qualifying session. Currently seeing a couple drivers listed up at the top of the board. Chris or Cody Gray in the 04 will be the first driver with a 10 second lap at about 10 minute 10 seconds or 10.875 that's his fastest lap so we're going to see how this goes and of course very very short around here Francisco with these cars and very very short track it's pretty much a blink of an eye and you're already gone around yeah 10 seconds uh in qualifying for a lap here that's insane to think about you know, it's a quarter of a mile, yeah, but still 10 seconds a lap here is insane to think about. But, of course, uh, as qualifying ending and we're getting ready to grid in the first tee, I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier while we were just uh, coming in here, but I, I, I really wish to, knew, just to, wish to know what exactly is the biggest difference, the biggest noticeable difference when you're driving inside this stadium on this kind of racing surface with artificial surroundings, really, compared to a natural racetrack sitting out constantly changing due to the sun i wonder what the actual noticeable difference of that would be and of course it'll be way different considering we're under the lights in a virtual setting in a building or in a stadium rather so it'll obviously not have to do with much weather because everything's air conditioned everything's kind of sealed tight in this building of course making sure uh, that everything's safe and for the dirt so that it can actually stay stable and it won't nothing will necessarily happen to it but right now you see drivers gridding right behind the iris official pace truck that means it is our time to cover our first heat of our many for this evening it'll start with cody gray pole sitter he'll leave this first heat with trice hardy to his outside ethan toter will be in the number 24 and third with chris brown in the number 36 in that fourth spot aiden kirker who we've seen a handful of times in the nb outdoors quick time series and a handful of other series on kbrn he's going to be in the fifth spot with ryan arbogast into the sixth spot in the number 720 dirt machine. Troy Judd in the number 899 will start the MTM Racing entry from seventh. And running out your top eight, Aiden Oxenine, the Toyota Dirt Midget. He will start in the 700 in the eighth spot. Top two, remember, make it in to the feature. If you miss out, you get put into the other mains. And, of course, you can find your way into the field still from there. But it is a relatively short gap when it comes down to especially when it comes down to the A&B Outdoors Quick Time Series, where pretty much half of the field makes it into the feature. Nonetheless, we're still going to have our top through make it in tonight. Pace truck already down. We're green for the first heat of the evening. Qualifying is going to matter for these heats tonight because of the short events. Actually, six laps in these heats. So qualifying is going to matter. As you see, the top three have already broken away, and there's already a battle for that transfer spot up in second. We see Hardy and Toter battling away with Gray leading. As actually, he's going to get a little bit of air and lose that spot. So Hardy will lose that last transfer spot here on lap two. So there goes Toter down to the inside. He found his way as the number 926 was just a little bit squirrely coming out of turn number two. So now it'll just be at the halfway mark with about three laps to go. Gray still pulling away with it, but Toter still trying to hang on for that final transfer spot. Here's the rest of these guys moving through. Oxidine had moved up to six. He's now in trouble with Troy Judd down to the inside, almost down to the outside wall. And currently no contestant for the top two as Gray is going to look over with a white flag in three and four. Gray to the white flag in heat number one. Already quick in these six laps. Gray is going to work off of turn two. He'll most likely probably try to get around the 700 before in time. But the 04 will come off turn four and win. Heat number one. Second place stays with Ethan Toder. He'll be advancing to the feature along with Cody Gray. The rest of the order stands. Chase Hardy, Chris Brown, Ryan Arbogast, Troy Judd, Aiden Oxidine, and Aiden Kirk are your final eight drivers and the rest of those six gonna find their way into the other mains and hope that they can find their way into the feature remember 18 or 17 cars rather will make their way into the main event so we will see how that all shakes out and already just as quickly as we start and finish heat number one we're already down to heat number two again six laps once again we'll have our, our shake of drivers it'll be about eight in this one da where davin cardwell will be the first driver on the grid He'll lead them to the green alongside the 0-2 of Josh Patterson, who we just saw a little bit earlier in the LWRC Buzz Bomb Race Paint Series at Daytona. Marshall Ryder, winner in the AMB Outdoors Quick Time Series. He'll start from third with Keith Bradley over in the fourth spot. Anthony Woodhall, another quick time driver. He will start from fifth in the 93 machine. And then 
In the 83 of track, Radsdale will be in sixth. Bo Krebs in the 168, another quick time series driver. He will be seventh. And Blake Kennedy will round out your eight car field for heat number two. Yeah, I apologize. I had to step away there for a second. I was receiving a phone call from a family member. I had to take care of that real quick. But yeah, half of this heat right here is full of drivers you've seen over in the A and B Quick Time Outdoor Series. And you have to wonder, even though they're different disciplines in terms of a dirt midget and a sprint car, you have to think that has to mean something when it comes to racing on dirt. And of course it will as we're under green here for this second heat. Cardwell already with a good advantage. Ryder, though, there's a gaggle of cars up to here. So we got a oh, huge wreck behind. Patterson around in there. One car up and over on his lid. That is Anthony Woodhall in the 93. He's already out of this. And Cardwell will continue to lead this group. Ryder holding on to the second spot. Marshall Ryder finds himself in that second spot. And he has a pretty good gap behind him to, I believe, that is the 168 of Bo Krebs. So he right now holding on a solid ground. So all he has to do is maintain for about another three laps as they come back to the line here. So he has to hold on for about three more laps to be able to claim a spot in that main. Right now all clear for the top two. Here's a battle for third though as Krebs is now under fire from Keith Bradley in the 710. He's been trying to look to the inside, just trying to get some sort of momentum and peek his nose down to the bottom. He's been able to do so, so he's get up to third. Question is, he may not have enough time to get up to second at the moment. The 83 of Ragsdale also looking as we got the white flag and heat number two. Cardwell already up and away and he's going to finish and he's going to win. Heat number two with Marshall Ryder finishing in second. And it all went off on that opening start of this heat. And that really is what gave the top two all the ground they needed to to just run some practice laps basically and come away with heat with uh, main spots. So that will be the end of heat number two. We'll step over into heat number three where we'll start to grid once again. Lots of drivers in this one, about 24 that registered for this event. So, of course, we'll have drivers missing the show. That's a, a conversation to go over into the mains when we get over there. The D main, C main, B main, for example. So, those will be the times when we have to get rid of drivers or at least drivers that will miss the show. And then we'll finalize our main field for the feature. But here we are in heat number three where John Canazaro on the Budweiser Toyota number 74 Dirt Midget will start on the pole. He'll lead them to the green with this very colorful 515 and Chris Cox will start to the outside. Ryan Reeves, driver in the MPI Cup Series, will start from third with Aaron Davidson. We'll starting over in the fourth spot. Caleb Nickel from the Quick Time Outdoors Series. He's going to be in the 79 in fifth spot with Cody Meyer in the 714. He'll be sixth. Brandon Stewart in the 44 will be seventh with Henry Clappard in his NOS Energy Dirt Midget. He will be in the number 34, finalizing your eight car field pace truck will already make its way off and we are quick to the gas green flag here in heat number three a good start by pole center canizaro has actually a big dive bomb there in the turn number one they're three wide and canizaro actually doesn't have that great of a corner and he's gonna fall two spots and immediately out of the transfer positions after having a great launch yeah reeves will take it over the 74 kind of struggled immediately on the start but then tried to gas it up once again he's been really you can see him just trying to hold on, but the car is mainly keeping itself straight. It's not really slicking itself and going through the dirt right now. Reeves with that transfer spot. Cox to the lead, but it's still a challenge between Canizaro and Reeves. Canizaro is just not letting go just yet. We have a four-car breakaway at the moment. And we got a car around. That's Henry Clapper in the number eight machine. He had gone around. He's down to pit road. So we had an issue over with him as well. But still battle with three laps to go. Here comes Canazar to the inside. Contact between the two out of turn two. They'll still stay side by side. 74 to the inside. He's going to look over the transfer spot. More contact until he reached the white flag. One more time around as Cox will be sure to get this win away. Canazaro though looking for second. Reeves with contact. One more shot for Reeves. But Canazaro will make it in to the feature event in the top two transfer spot. Nickel will finish third. Reeves with contact will finish fourth. And Chris Cox will win heat number three in his colorful machine, the 515 as well. He will win and will step into our 12 lap event. I believe heats may have been, they haven't skipped actually. They have been skipped. So we are, I believe in possibly a D main or, or some sort of LCQ. I believe this is one of the mains that we have here tonight. 
don't believe with the amount of drivers we've had here that it adjusts accordingly so obviously if you have a certain amount of drivers iRacing will will cut it or cut the heats at least to make sure that everybody's organized it can be equal throughout and then of course you could still find out so we probably skipped a handful of heats as well in order to make that happen but nonetheless our 12 lap event will feature cody meyer at the top of this grid with troy judd the 899 to the outside blake kennedy in the 75 will be third with aaron davidson in the fourth spot aiden noxodyne in the 700 his toyota machine he was one of the last drivers in one of the previous heats he will start fifth in this one with josh patterson the 02 he'll re-rack him up and try to get it from sixth brandon stewart in the 44 will be seventh aiden kirker new york native will be sitting eighth Anthony Woodhall in the ninth spot. Henry Clapper, your final driver in that final heat. You saw him go around. He will be the final driver in this group. It's about 10 drivers here in this, in this main. And Meyer will be sure to lead these ones to the green flag. The pace truck will make its left off into the middle of the track. And here comes Meyer. Meyer will lead the field to the green flag. We're up and away in this 12-lap event. When everybody on the gas, everybody quick to the throttle, but everybody still stacking up around second on back. As you see, a change for second there between Meyer or Judd, at least, and Aaron Davidson. Has got a caution already on lap number two, and it's involving Henry Clapper and I believe Anthony Woodhall as well. I'm sorry, I'm back. Is this the C main? I believe this is the C main. Uh, one of the mains they have skipped due to the the drivers here. But we'll we'll look at what happened with Henry Clapper here. I believe it was two incidents at the same time. Here's Clapper though, on the start. And there he is with Anthony Woodhall, but then the 34 gets into the wall. And then we'll see what happens to Woodhall because he was up ahead. He got contact with Aiden Kirker, and then he went flipping oh. over. Got to add that to the flip count. I believe that's two on our list tonight. And they're both out of this race already. So it seems as though those two might have to scrap. And they might be either out of this one for good or they still have a chance or some sort of chance to scrap some sort of movement into the feature event. But Cody Meyer will still be your leader as we got the one to green signal. So Pace Truck will make its left now and single file restarts it is. So Meyer and 714 will be back on the gas to the bottom. Not as good of a start. He'll hold everybody up. And on lap number five, Whoa. he's going to hit the outside wall. Everybody's going to get in contact. contact Luckily, Patterson. they keep it straight. Patterson over the dirt mound, and Davidson will take the race lead. Yeah, he could. Oh, and they're around in the further in the back. Patterson. Oh, Patterson, I believe, down. up and over on his car. Caution waves at lap seven. Oh, my gosh. And what has happened here? Huge gaggle of cars back here. They got into contact as I guess they might have been that communication on the start. Here's Josh Patterson's view as he went up and over. You can see the 714 gets into contact. See as though they're okay for the time being. But then the 02 just trying to get back up to speed. Went sliding into the 899. And then back up, boom, right there with the oh 700 God. of Oxidine. That was Troy Judd also involved in there as well. The flip counter goes up once again, I guess. I believe it's gone up twice. Because we've already, it's gone up two more times. Because we've had already a couple of drivers over the outside wall and have their shot over the roof but that will put it in kirker into third blake kennedy will be second aaron davidson will obtain the race lead as cody meyer will drop to fifth he's down pit road two laps down so i believe we'll just have a four car or five car race to the finish but three laps to go as pace truck will make its way to the left we'll see how aaron davidson does on this initial start he'll go very early into turn number three we're back under green in this 12 lap event yeah, that dirt mount on the bottom is going to be hard because it's a little bit flat. We actually have another wreck in one. Upside down once again, somebody, but no caution as we're able to stay green. Green as Davidson will take the white flag into this main. So one more time around. Blake Kennedy will hold on to second. Kirker to third, but into three and four for the final time. Davidson will look for the win in this main. So he'll take it away with about three cars on the racetrack to finish this one. Or I believe four with Henry Clappert. Who's sitting in ninth? Wow, what so a we, what intense heat! So now we main? push ourselves into, I believe this should be the C main rather, or it could be the B main. Either one of them. We do have the mains, and we see everybody lining up on the grid. Chase Hardy will find himself to the front of this one with Keith Bradley in the 710. We'll look to his outside. Caleb Nickel in the third spot. He will start with Chris Brown in the 36 to his outside of row number two. 
Bo Krebs in the 168 will start from fifth with Ryan Reeves in the 23 Hoonigan machine from sixth. Ryan Arbogast in the 720 will be seventh with Chad Ragsdale in eighth. Aaron Davidson, who we saw in that last main, he made his way into this one with Blake Kennedy. So those top two will make it in. I believe the rest of the top two will find their way into the feature event. And we'll see what happens here. in this main and it'll be very quick hardy will try to be over on the gas and everybody else will see how they scramble though for second on back because that seems to be the main point of conversation as we get to the green flag in most of these yeah, the, the pace truck is gonna pull off here and unleash the field to go once again and we'll see if it's just as hectic as that other one that we just wrapped up which had three flips in a, the same span, span of time but here we go we're underway Hardy gets a good launch and already contact from second on back. And he got one around already. Yeah, it was one around. That's the number 29. But he gets hit back up to shape. But a caution waves before that even gets happening. So we have a caution immediately on lap number one. And it did involve the number 710 of Keith, Keith Bradley who got into contact. I think he almost went up and over on the initial start here. You see him get hit with Caleb Nickel, Chris Brown, and some of the other guys a little bit further back behind. See right here, contact with Nickel, then got sandwiched, and then got hit by Brown, and he went around, but then the 75 of Blake Kennedy kind of hit him back around. It seems as though that was enough to trigger the yellow, even though the cars don't believe are necessarily damaged to a certain extent. So we'll see. As we'll most likely get the one to green signal this time by Hardy will be your leader. It is, it is very tough around this. I, I can't imagine how being a driver here would be just how how painstakingly patient you have to be with these cars, especially on the throttle. We'll see what happens on this restart lap number five. It'll be Hardy up to the bottom off of turn three and four. He'll take the lead and he'll retain it as Krebs will hold on his second. Brown, though, looking for the spot as he's up and over up to the outside wall. Will the caution be waived? I'm not sure. Because it has not been signaled just yet. Hardy now still in this lead with Arbogast. Going to find his second. Reeves to third. And no yellow. We stay green. Two or three cars were flipping and there's no caution. This has been an insane span of time what's been going on in these past couple heats. You see here's the 20, uh, 710 of Bradley now with Ragsdale. Brown was involved in that but he's still going. So is Bro Krebs. And Caleb Nickel, but they're finding their way as there's one up to the outside wall. That was Krebs. I believe he goes back going, so we stay green still. Right in front of Blake Kennedy in the number 75 machine. I believe Davidson might be out of this one. He's all the way to the back. Hardy still leading now with four laps to go. Hardy has a pretty safe lead. All he has to do is not hit the wall because that's proven to be very troublesome here today. And Arbitros, you see him back there in second trying to hold off Reeves. And he's still going. He'll get two laps to go this time. By battle for second, though, is heating up. Here comes Reeves now to the outside. Arbogast has found his way to defend, but Reeves going to rip the top this time. They're still side by side in the front as we're reaching the white flag. One more lap, and Reeves will take over that second spot, but it's all Tom uh, Hardy up front. Excuse me for saying the actor's name. <laughs> Chase Hardy. It'll be in three and four. He'll get off on the outside, and he'll win. This main, he'll get around. I believe that was Davidson, who just got lapped at the last second. He will take the win. Reeves will be second. Arbogast third. Bradley fourth. And Chad Ragsdale will be in your top five as Brown, Nickel, Krebs, Kennedy, and Davidson will re-round this top ten as there goes Ragsdale right into the ramp off the track. <laughs> but I believe now we have our field set. So we have everybody in this Feature event, it'll be 50 laps, but we have just about a three-minute warm-up session, so we'll have drivers take laps around the racetrack. You already see some of them finding their way out. So while well, we've got our, our field set, Francisco, we have everybody in. It's now down to the 50-lap feature event for $15. If there's anyone you're catching your eyes on here, who is it going to be? Marshall Ryder's definitely good on the dirt side of things. We've seen, obviously, a couple of guys that won the heat, you know, um, Gray was really good. He showed some good pace. Carwell was also pretty decent in his heat. So a couple of guys that I'm not too sure of in terms of I've never seen them race, so I can't really say who to who, – I, I don't really know who to pick in that aspect of things. But we'll find out throughout these 50 laps. 
And of course, a lot of strong drivers. And it's something that we obviously have seen in, in some of the series. I mentioned the AMB Outdoors Quick Time Sprint Car Series. A, lot, a good chunk of those drivers here tonight have found their way in that series. Dave raced in that series. Obviously, you mentioned Marshall Ryder being one of those. Anthony Woodhall being one of those as well. I remember uh, seeing Ryan Reeves from the MPI Cup Series. He's a, a current driver in that series that I cover over on Podium Esports. Ryan Reeves, or not Ryan Reeves, Aiden Kirker, actually, as I just mentioned Ryan Reeves. Aiden Kirker, driver in many series that we've covered before. Marshall Ryder, of course, you had mentioned in that series. Bo Krebs, one of the drivers in that series as well. Patterson has made his starts as well. And, of course, a lot of new drivers that seem to be very, very potent on the dirt. Cody Gray being one of those drivers. Cardwell, Hardy that we've seen win heat races, heat, win the main races. They've done a phenomenal job so far. And it's going to be curious to see how they all shake up as they're making laps around the track. It's currently Gray, your top sitter on the charts here on the board. As you can see, a tiny battle here between Chris Brown and the 04 of Cody Gray, who leads the standings right now in terms of the time. Fastest lap is a 10 0.901. It was a 10.875 in qualifying, but the track has slickened up a bit. So we obviously do see a difference in it, the way these drivers are. Just a little bit slower with these cars. And why don't we take a lap around with Cody Gray? We'll look at the cockpit. Just see how tough it is to drive a rigid here. See there, he's obviously staying on the lower side of the racetrack right now, but the groove has been moving upwards as we saw the end of that last main saw Reeves really making that top work and to make the bottom work you have to kind of clip the mound but only enough to really get it to turn because we've seen that mound has been a bit of a tough spot for some of these guys and of course that top especially when you get up to the outside wall it is very tough with these open wheel machines you see some drivers already flipping there and another driver flipping on the other end of the track so they're already getting into contact I guess just waiting over as the warm-up session will now take down and everybody will find their way to the grid for this 50-lap feature event for the Wark Chili Bowl Nationals from the Tulsa Expo Center, or at least the virtual Tulsa Expo Center at that. You'll see warm-up now come to a close. It'll tick down to zero, and now will be the time for the main event. Our 16-car field will find their way for 50 laps. We'll get over our starting grid, see where every driver and your favorite driver will be starting here tonight cody gray will be the first driver on the grid to lead the field to the green right alongside davin cardwell in the number 490 with chris cox into third ethan toter will be the fourth driver left with marshall Ryder in this top five john canazaro in the number 74 will be six with chase hardy winning his main will be in seventh ryan reeves in the number 23 will start on pit road seems as though he's supposedly supposed to start in eighth with arbogast in ninth keith bradley 10th chad ragsdale 11th chris brown 12th Caleb Nickel, 13th. Bo Krebs in the 14th spot on the 168. Blake Kennedy in the blue and yellow, 75, will be 15th. And 16th place will belong finally to Aaron Davison. However, he'll probably gain up some sort of positions considering the fact that uh, most of them have started on pit road and some of them have actually yet to start. So I believe, not sure whether we're going to get this under green just yet, but we'll see as we're still pacing. Actually, we're supposed to go green now, but we'll, we'll take the pace truck one more time around. Seems as though there might have been a miscommunication with some drivers entering their session correctly. So we'll see what happens. It's supposedly Cardwell at the top, but Gray is not registered in the first spot. So we'll see exactly what goes down here. Interesting situation we have going on, but those people who decided to pit start, definitely not the worst decision they've ever made. You can see as everybody's pretty much doubled up, Pace Truck is stuck on the inside of the track. He has not made his way in front of the field. So we'll see whether they end up going green because we're still pacing here. So it'll most likely be Cardwell and Cox at the head of this field as apart from Cody Gray, which should be, which is very unfortunate considering how, how good Gray has been. But we'll see exactly what happens here. Still trying to get things figured out from the officials themselves and see whether any word has been given out. But this should be your front row. This should be the rows heading through the rest of this field as some of them have not made it. Ethan Toter being one of them. Obviously, Cody Gray seeing uh, some other drivers. Oh. I believe everybody else is in. But we'll see. A lot of those other guys are deciding to start from the pits. But they have not gone green yet. So we're going to stay another lap under pacing. And this is using a fuel, Kenneth. Yeah, this is using a fuel. I believe they have, uh, they have put on some extra fuel on these ones. So I... Not sure whether they can make it all the way around. 
considerably, but we have not gotten the green for any sort of laps yet. So I'm not sure whether this will be the inevitable green flag that we're seeing or whether this will be some sort of other different scenario. We'll try to find out ourselves as Cardwell. I think we're trying to find it out just as easily as you guys are trying to find it out. So we're kind of on the same page here as well as what's seeming to happen out on track. So apparently we've got word from the main official, Brayson Collins, owner of the league. He said that there was a glitch with the fuel fuel setup. So maybe, or at least the feature will be shortened to about 30 as opposed to 50 laps. So we'll probably see drivers go up to lap 30. However, we have not even started one green flag lap yet, Francisco. Yeah, them, I mean, I'm kind of questioning what's going on because if you look at the top left of our screen, it still says pacing and the pace truck is pulled off maybe about six pace laps ago. So I'm, I'm curious as to what is actually going on. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they're going at caution speed until they go to, say, lap 20 and then they go green from there to do their 30 laps, as they're saying, so that they can use up less fuel by going at, such, at a slower pace. But honestly, I'm not too sure what the situation is as going around this sort of pace. Yeah, this is still using up fuel, however. So we'll, we'll just try and find out ourselves as drivers. I believe now they're going to start to make their way. Obviously, I want to thank every single one of you, 52 viewers out here from the Chili Bowl Nationals on the work side. So we thank you so much for tuning in with us. And I believe we'll be sure to get the green flag very, very shortly. There might have been the green flag as Cardwell may have fallen back. Cox has taken the green flag, and we surely should be up and away here from the Chili Bowl Nationals. Finally underway, and you see a good start there, and they're battling for second. Three of very similarly painted cars with, uh, oh, one of them actually seems to have gone very high up there, and they're going to lose a couple of spots, but, oh, we actually got one going over the barrier. Oh, one up and around, and over in the air. I'm not sure we're going to try to find which driver that is in a red machine that went up and over. However... Everyone's struggling around. Here comes oh. one of the drivers there. That was Davin Cardwell got into the one of the drivers there. He's over into the wall, and that's Marshall oh, Ryder. And it's everybody still trying to find themselves around. Cardwell should be the leader here. As they're trying to figure out everything that's going on at the moment. However, yeah. Cardwell still in this lead for this feature. Yeah, the we're having also issues with the live timing and scoring. As one of them just happened to pull off right there. I'm wondering what is going on right now. It's just has several cars stopped on the racetrack. Now let's see exactly what has happened here as we're going to try to find out our scoring. A lot of things randomly going on at the track at the moment. However... Still going to try and find out exactly where this began. It seems though Cardwell still in the lead, however. You can see one of the drivers right there to the inside. A lot of drivers still on pit road, so I'm not sure whether this was supposed to happen or whether we were still eagerly on, but it still claims that we're pacing on the track, so I'm not sure what is really happening here. Seems as though everyone's still around the track. A very, very confusing situation here, Francisco. As yeah, a lot of drivers are stuck up. down. Some of them still making laps on the track, however. I believe we, we may have to, to force ourselves oh, into a I new just session. Got word, I just got word from the chat that there will be a new session. So the, the new session will be made to properly do everything. Oh, okay, so we'll have, we'll have our officials... Uh, find some sort of new session so then we'll, we'll be able to get uh, our coverage to you on that side so unfortunate that we couldn't get the green flag here i believe it may have just been just a confusion with the the setup of the session itself in terms of the actual feature considering the fuel count and, and the fuel cells and everything that's going on with these dirt midgets so we'll bring you coverage and this is why nobody's on the track right now because we will go live very very soon for our main feature event everything else going as follows and we most likely will have the same grid that we followed here with cody gray should be the pole sitter for our feature and we'll try to get into a brand new session but as everybody's waiting we'll just take a short break and we'll be back once we get back into the session you're watching the work chili bowl nationals right here on the cable no racing network
Welcome back to the Wark Chili Bowl Nationals here on the Cable and Racing Network. Unfortunately, had some sort of issue with the actual feature session. So now we have everything set and underway. Still 50 laps for our feature. We have everybody in from that they made it in from the mains and the heats. If you're watching a little bit earlier here tonight, of course, myself and Ken and Francisco Bacayao, and myself, Kenneth Bueno, in the booth here for tonight's coverage uh, for our 50 lap feature. Already had our coverage for the mains and the heat so we have everybody set in 16 drivers will find their way in the field cody gray should be the driver that will be on the pole for this main event and of course francisco i'll turn to you because we kind of talked about the feature just a little bit now we have a little more time to kind of gather our thoughts about what we're going to see here tonight and how things are really going to work but we have our 16 drivers lots of these drivers kind of at different profiles there's a lot of prolific drivers here tonight some of them we've seen in other series some of them we've really haven't seen until tonight but nonetheless a lot of these drivers showing their dirt skills and showcasing the best of the best here on the virtual side yeah i'm still thrilled to see what we got going on i hope our audience is able to enjoy the race we got for them here tonight now that we have everything seems to be settled out we're going to be able to get a fantastic event going here tonight at the Chili Bowl Nationals, we, we, of course, we have some great drivers who will make sure to deliver some good results and some good racing. And really, for, and throughout the heats, we saw some good racing. Obviously, there was a couple of wrecks, which are pretty normal, I guess, <laughs> but not to the extent that which we saw them. But that was probably just a lot of people knowing that it wasn't the main race. So presumably, in the main race, we will see a lot less carnage. So I hope that we're able to see the contenders stay up front, you know, and everybody sort of be able to pose a challenge for the win of course you'd like to see that yeah of course we will probably have a very very potent challenge for the win so far in our heats and mains if you haven't been watching so far on the cable and racing network we've had some good battles for second on back however for the lead it's always been one dominant driver but the difference here will be that the drivers who are dominating those heats in the mains they will all face up against each other so it'll not just be one driver leading the rest of the pack It'll mostly be all those strong drivers and maybe even some surprise drivers getting up and doing very well into the feature event. Again, 50 laps here tonight, so we will have a relatively longer race as opposed to what we've previously seen, he seen here on this network. But just a reminder that if you're all in the chat and if you want to join the conversation with us up in the KBRN booth, you can do so by using hashtag AskKBRN if you get your question Followed by a hashtag, you'd ask anything you like about the series, about the race, about our predictions, about us in the broadcasting booth, our broadcasting services, and much, much more. Once again, that's hashtag AskKBRN for anything you'd like to ask. It's sort of our thing if you're new to the Cable and Racing Network. It's our thing. It's our way of interacting with the audience and making sure they're enjoying the event just as much as we are up in the booth. And, of course, interacting with them on our platform will only make things a lot more fun. And, of course, we'll make them a lot more active, make ourselves more interactive with our viewers and you know get their concerns get their questions in and of course make sure whether whatever they want to figure out we can give them the answer to we'll answer it the best way we can so of course that's what we usually do here on the cable and racing network if you are just tuning in with us as we're just about a minute 15 out from i believe our warm-up before we get to a proper qualifying francisco and and now we're we're going to look at some of the drivers here cody gray being one of them as we're going to take a look at some of the drivers around this field but the thing that we've really not covered dirt much before we've covered sprint cars in a series for a handful of weeks now but this is the first time we take dirt midgets at this very venue chili bowl very very big venue very very big race in real life it's going to happen in about about a couple minutes time 25 minutes i'd say from the real life event 8 30 p.m eastern but you know on the virtual side still very very big deal and of course a big deal for us that we barely see these and it's kind of our opportunity to get this underway yeah, this, this is one of those big races that everybody talks about for the respective series. We talk about Daytona for the NASCAR Cup Series. We talk about uh, Monaco for the Formula One. We talk about the Indy 500 for IndyCar. We talk about Knoxville when it comes to the sprint cars. And, of course, we talk about the Chili Bowl when it comes to the dirt midgets. You know, there's always that one big race every single season that everybody wants to win. And this Chili Bowl is exactly that. I mean, already to, uh, we've seen some people actually trying to search for the actual real-life Chili Bowl that have asked where they can watch it in our chat today and that's just uh just how many people are interested in the chili bowl and of course the iRacing one even though it's the virtual side of things it's still a bit a pretty big event and of course iRacing did have their main official series chili bowl event that was 
taking place in late December around near Christmas time. And they had a super session to enable that. And of course, have everybody do that on the official side. This is part of a, a league called Warped. So this is most likely a, a league scenario as opposed to actually an official scenario with, with the super sessions and all the things that iRacing has to offer on that side. So of course, you know, this one having a good amount of drivers. And of course, our 16 drivers will start their qualifying laps. Now we've got five minute qualifying underway. So everybody going to start their way around this track and i believe they've already finished so i guess we'll, we'll get rid of qualifying then we'll have our grid set in and everybody will be through and out we we'll, should be good to go for what should be a fantastic chili bowl event i want to thank everybody for tuning in with us obviously very very special event and actually our broadcasting services happened practically last minute uh, for this event so at least it's, it's good to know that we've tackled this event and it's going to be a lot of fun and we're already expecting very very good racing here tonight we'll look over into our grid and what it should look like when we go green the number 04 of cody gray should be at the top of this field with gavin cardwell to second chris cox would be third with ethan toter to the fourth spot marshall Ryder, john Canazaro should round out row number three with with chase hardy and ryan reeves in the 23 they'll be founding out in the next row in row number four arbogast will start a little bit further back in the fifth row with Bradley Keith Bradley up to the outside and then we'll have Ragsdale we'll have Chad Ragsdale and Chris Brown to the outside of him Caleb Nickel Bo Krebs then Blake Kennedy and Aaron Davidson will be the final drivers in this field for this 50 lap feature for the Bork Chili Bowl Nationals pace truck already make its left it'll be the cue for Cody Gray to hit on the gas pedal we are green from the Chili Bowl Nationals And a good start by him. He's able to get out to the lead right where he left off from his heat. And he has this pretty sizable gap to those cars behind him. And you see a difference in line already trying to figure out where everybody's sort of best at. Try to see what each line is capable of doing. Everyone's trying to figure out what to do. So far, so good. So clean throughout the, this field. No, no wrecks, no incidents as of now. We've made it through to the third lap. And we already have a battle for that fourth spot. In a battle for fourth already behind, that's Toter and Ryder, who's a little bit further back. Here is Ryan Reeves in the number nine machine. He's also going to find his way into this group as well as they're side by side a little bit further up ahead. That's Toter, and there goes, I believe that's, yeah, Toter goes around Cox for that position. He'll move into third, Cardwell and Gray, though, as Cardwell tries to put on the pressure. Yeah, we got a car going slow around the bottom. Can't tell who that is, but already an early problem for one of our drivers. And it seems as though it's Blake Kennedy, and he may have a terminal issue here. He's pulling off his... He actually have a wreck. That's Reeves up Ryan, and over around the racetrack. Ryan Reeves up and over. I don't believe we'll have a yellow. We stay green. Reeves was holding himself in the top five, top ten. Before this incident, we saw a slow Blake Kennedy. And there goes Ryan Reeves up and over once again to the outside wall. But meanwhile, up front, it is still Cody Gray with lap cars interfering between himself and the number 101 of Devin Cardwell trying to find his way to the inside as we go on board. And, and we actually have a caution out. on the racetrack. So caution out already oh. as we were going to go on board. I believe there's one driver right in front up and around and over. And that seemed to have been... As you see, Is he's still card? around. It was Chase Hardy in the number 116. We'll take a replay oh. and see exactly where that stemmed from. As he went up and over. I'm not sure whether this was a single car incident or whether this was just something along those lines we'll look right over here at the top cam here it's exactly where this began you can see him right up to the outside the working by himself at the moment there was a 74 oh. that was Conazaro that got into him and then trying to find his way back around got up into the outside wall oh. and there goes I believe that was Nickel that hit him right squarely in the middle and then around went hard he got another hit as well and he's around and most likely out of this event already as we're under caution for the first time here tonight very quickly, I'd just like to inform all our football fans who are watching here tonight. The Packers did get a win over the Los Angeles Rams. Just quickly like to inform that. There's contact behind these guys under caution. And he saw the number 04 Gray was trying to head up to the outside in order to kick things off once again. But there was some contact as they were communicating, trying to get up in single file line. But nonetheless, we're back under green at lap number 12. Gray is still at the head with Cardwell trying to chase him down. Cox to third. Toter up to fourth and Conazaro back up to the top five. I'm trying to work that outside, trying to get by that 
that driver, and he's going to get a good run through the center of the corner to stay side by side. That puts him in a favorable spot entering this corner. You see a bit of a slide job there to try and keep that position, and the crossover trying to work their way around for this top five position. On board with Canizaros, he's still trying to look to the inside of Toter. You can see him slide up to the middle of the track, then get that kick off the exit, and he's going to stay into that fourth spot. Canizaro will have to look over for the top five. Meanwhile, a handful of drivers in this group. You can see Ragsdale and Ryder still battling here for P number seven. And a little bit high goal there, almost contact between those two as the difference in lines from all the way against the wall to all the way on the bottom to that dirt mound as you see one of those sideways way up there. He's gonna lose a little bit of time and that allows him. Oh, and up and over he goes. Ragsdale up and over to the outside. Will there be a caution? We'll find out. But he's up on his lid. Add that to the flip counter, and he's already out of this one. So another driver suffering the fate of the flip here at the Chili Bowl Nationals on the virtual side of the work. Uh, as we go over to lap number 19, Gray still at the head. However, by just not too big of a gap, you can see Cardwell still trying to aim him down. He's been looking over to that outside, Francisco, and you can see as these drivers are getting around, as the, the track starts to slick up, you can see them going to the inside, slide all the way to the outside, especially in Cardwell's case, where he's really getting his momentum on the entrance of the corner, and he's able to maximize it, kind of diamond his way out of it. As Gray's oh, in the outside wall. He gets in the wall. Gray's into the wall. That'll give the lead over to Cardwell. As we were just discussing that, Gray's going to have to find his way to hunt down, but there's still a good gap to Cox, who's now under fire from Toter. Toter does move up into that third spot, or at least he's trying to do so right now on the bottom, trying to find his way past Cox. And he's going to get a decent run through there, try to slide up the racetrack. Won't work. But big key thing that happened there was Gray got into the wall in the center of the corner and lost the lead as Cox gets past. Well, now Gray will have to fight back as Cardwell starting to slowly pull away. And as such a short track like this, a one-fourth mile, Francisco, you don't have that much time to get around this racetrack. You get a blink of an eye, you're already making a lap here. 10 seconds or 11 now as they've worn out here on this racetrack or this virtual Chili Bowl Nationals at the Tulsa Expo Center. And so far, you can see some of the lap cars starting to take into effect. That'll easily help Gray, though, as he's already caught up, and now he's going to split the middle there. Yeah, well, another thing to add to your point of how short this racetrack is, we're already halfway through this main event. We're Oh, and the lap car is going to almost lose it in front of our leaders that was such a close call for that top two he's able to keep it straight and point it in the right direction but gray is all over the back and actually passed for the lead as we have a coup another lap around that was chris brown the number 12 he's up in the outside wall there goes the caution at our halfway point already passed it at lap number 25 but this time the caution waves on the track as you see chris brown on the 12 slowly trying to ear his way around we'll try and get a replay see exactly where this began but he stuck there for a while, Francisco. Just, I believe, here in a battle with Caleb Nickel. Could have been some contact between the two here. Oh, yeah. And indeed, there it is, right over the dirt mount on the inside. It gets into Nickel, but then is able to just slow it down and woe it before hitting the outside wall. And then pretty much just stuck there, waiting for everybody to go by. Almost a hit there from one of the cars. I believe that was Ragsdale that almost hit him. And then Brown is pretty much stuck there. However, he's mostly in good shape. Got some cars running around, and Gray will be your leader next time by. I think the admins had to throw that one. I don't think I race. I don't. I'm not sure if I racing cautions are on, but the admins had to throw that one. He was stuck on the outside, trying to wait for a hole. And when you get this spread out, you're usually not going to find one. So they had to throw that one. It was definitely a safety issue. As here we go, tightening things up, and there goes Gray getting a good launch. Cardwell actually had a bit of a slide off turn number four, and he's going to drop a couple spots. Yeah, you see Chris Cox get by. There goes Toter. There goes Keith Bradley now to the inside. Contact. Even more contact as he's around. There goes Davin Cardwell. Will there be a yellow? He's up on his roof. I'm not sure whether they will call the yellow. Indeed, is. they will with about 18 laps to go. And the driver who was just in the lead a handful of laps back. Well, he's going to have to deal with another issue here, and that's pretty much just getting back in this race. We'll see where this began here. It began right up to the top in this main group as, as they were it working really together. Restart. And then here, got into Bradley and then gets into, I believe that was Toter and Ryder. And then right up to the outside, you can see Bo Krebs easily getting around. That was very, very close to that 168. We'll look, we'll look on board. Watch how close this is in the 3 and 4. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it mainly started around the restart. He he had such a he had a bit of a, a bit of a slide, and he he lost momentum, and immediately that's what took him out of that. 
So we have a caution now. Should be getting to 16 laps to go from the Wark Chili Bowl Nationals in this 50-lap feature. Gray is still your leader. Cardwell was really the only threat at this point. But we'll see if Cox or Bradley or really anyone behind them can try to find their way. And they're still... Not that much time left. We'll see as Gray will lead them back in three and four. We're back in the green. Turn around for Gray, who had that moment getting the wall and giving up the lead to Carvalho. Finding his way back to the lead, and he's continuing trying to see if he can pull away and get a win here. But he's still got 14 laps to go as Cox has moved his way up to second. Bradley's into third, and they're a, a big scramble cars for the lower side of the top five. You see Gray running away with it. Here comes Bradley getting pushed up the track by Marshall Ryder. He's forcing the issue into turns three and four. There goes Ryder the inside. Bradley gets no tapped to the top. More contact with the drivers in the top five. But Gray at this point running away with the lead. And he's already catching the back side of the field. But move Marshall Ryder into that third spot. He, we've seen him come alive in some of these dirt races that we've covered in the AMB Outdoors Quick Time Series, but right now in that podium spot, trying to chase down Cox for that second spot, so look out for Marshall Ryder having a strong run to the end of the race. race. Here comes a three-car train here, Ethan Toda, Ryan Arbogast, and Keith Bradley, and Marshall Ryder as Bradley has just tagged the outside wall. They're all in about a four-car train, a little bit of a pack within each other. Look oh. at that splitting, the middle comes to two, but he's Contact. around. Contact with Arbogast as he got sent around. Got saved by Nickel, oh. even more by the 083. There goes the yellow flag as we were expecting. And add that another one to the flip counter. Wait, how many have we had tonight? I, I think I think a good amount. But we cracked double digits. Yeah, I think already we've cracked double digits in this 50 lap feature. But this will delay Gray's run for the win at this point. And could evenly rack up the field once more. We'll try to get a look at where that started with Cardwell. He got into contact. You see Bradley around here as well. This is when the caution came out. But right as they were working around here, you can see. This is one of the drivers a little bit further back. There was contact with the two of Arbogast. There's Arbogast around. He got hit by Nickel as well. And then the 083 of Chad Ragsdale gets to him as well. And then he ends up on his side. He's actually still there on the track as the pace car is going out. I'm not sure what's going to go on here, but Gray and the rest of them are going to find their way around with just a handful of laps to go. Green flag back out as Gray leads. I wonder why he's still on the racetrack and why the green flag was displayed. Is he still there? Yes, he, he is, is still there. There's another yellow on the Boston's, track. Oh, there's two cars on their side. And we saw one other car. Was that Marshall Ryder on his side as well? Let's I know see. we saw Arbogast in there, but we saw another car on his side as well. Have to see here. I'm not, I'm not sure if look. that's not Marshall Ryder in third right now. This is the look from from the leader. If he gets they're actually back. both gone. Yeah, now it seems as though they're out of the track, so we should be away from the safety hazards. There goes the OD3 of Ragsdale. He's going to find his lap back. And we yeah, should sure get what that the was end about. of this race with about three laps to go. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was about. I don't know why they were both sitting in the middle of the racetrack there. That was. I'm not sure what was going on there. So Gray's just setting up his race car. Should be a three-lap dash to the finish as pace truck lights are off. It'll be him, Cody Gray, Keith Bradley in second, Ethan Toto to third, Caleb Nickel fourth, Aaron Davidson. We saw the tail end of this field. He will be in this top five. Pace truck makes its left to the inside. Gray will head to the gas pedal whenever he pleases. He'll do it now in a there three four. We're back under green with two laps to go. Good launch from him. All he has to do is hold on. Bradley's trying to take that second spot, see if he can find the best amount of grip wherever he can to close the gap. A little bit of a clip of the dirt mound, but he has a sizable lead. So white flag in the air in the Wark Chili Bowl Nationals for Cody Gray. Cody Gray going to find his way around. He's been good all night long. He's pretty much led this entire race. And off of turn four, Cody Gray will win the Wark Chili Bowl Nationals from the virtual Tulsa Expo Center on a dominating performance in the heats, the mains, and the feature. $15 will go to the winner, Cody Gray in the 04. There comes Ethan Toder to celebrate with him. And Toder will come to finish second in this one. Keith Bradley will finish in the top three. Caleb Nickel will be fourth. And Chris Brown back to a top five after being sent around earlier in this race. Just to show yeah, you how fast things happen at a track like this. 
un- an unbelievable race. This was a hectic race, and that's an understatement, wouldn't you say? I probably would. I mean, this was, this was a wild, wild event. You can see Gray just stopping there as he's uh, slowly trying to burn it down, I believe, on the dirt. Not really an easy task to do. Not really much like asphalt, but you see the 04 of Gray. He's going to loop around the track to the front straightaway. The fans are. What a dominating win by the 04 of Gray as he'll burn it down and just try to make his celebratory laps on the track and he'll make his way out into the ramp, I believe. No, he'll actually take his way to the outside wall. Artie Jarvis, there he goes around. There's the burnout for the number 04. Dominating performance tonight. And as he will, will celebrate, he'll continue to move his way to victory lane. There he is right there on the little steps, so he'll celebrate over there. But as we have him celebrating down in the middle of the track, we'll take a look at our unofficial results for the 16-car field in these 2021 Wark Chili Bowl Nationals. Cody Gray, as previously mentioned, will win tonight's event. $15 will go to him after a dominating performance. Really pretty much led almost every lap apart from Cardwell taken away from him. Ethan Toder in the number 23 will finish in the second spot. But Keith Bradley in the number 29 will be third. Caleb Nickel in the 79 had a really struck or a really strugglesome run earlier on. He'll finish in the fourth spot with Chris Brown in the number 12. We got sent around that triggered one of the yellows at the halfway mark. He will be finishing fifth tonight with Aaron Davidson in the 03 starting at the tail end of this one. He finishes up to six. What a job by him to do so. Bo Krebs in the 168 will finish in seventh, but Chad Ragsdale in the number 83 will finish in eighth. John Conazaro in the 74 will finish ninth, and Marshall Ryder, who had a strong run up until that point, got contact with one of the drivers. He got sent all the way back to 10th. Looking at the drivers finishing outside the top 10, Chris Cox, who was actually having a solid run. I'm not sure what happened to him, but he results in a 11th place finish eight laps down. Ryan Arbogast finishes in the 12th position, and Dev- and um, Devin Card- Caldwell, I hope I said that right, finishing 13th after really putting all the challenge to um, to Cody, our race winner. So unfortunate for him, unable to carry that all the way through the race. Ryan Reeves, who went up and over, finishes in 14th. Chase Hardy finishes in 15th, and Blake Kennedy rounds out the field with 46 laps down. That is your entire 16-car field from the 2021 Wark Chili Bowl Nationals. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have our KBRM post-race coverage brought to you by SDC. And we'll have interviews with the top five and, of course, our recapping thoughts from the Chili Bowl arena itself. Don't go anywhere. We've got more coverage coming next.
Welcome back to the virtual Tulsa Expo Arena and our Work Chili Bowl Nationals where we kick off our KBR and post-race coverage brought to you by SDC. Well, we had a whale of a night, all of the heats, all of the mains pushing up until the 50 lap feature, but it was all Cody Gray at the head of this field. He wins tonight's event and we'll bring him in from the victory lane. You can see him sitting right there on the podium, I guess, not too far of a virtual walk, I'd say through the arena to get over to him but we'll step with our winner Cody Gray in the booth and we'll bring him in and uh, Cody I'll bring you in now from victory lane what what a night that was for you uh, I'd say probably dominating is an understatement you've led pretty much almost every lap in this race apart from that slight change of hand in the lead earlier in this event but just walk us through this night together because I know that you had a very short stint in the heats because you already won it. You already had locked yourself in the feature. But in terms of the feature event itself, what really stood out the most in this one for you? Um, the, tonight was – it was really kind of an off night because I really wasn't expecting to be this good. Um, the midget's normally, like, the only car that I run on iRacing. So, you know, I, I wanted to be in the top five, but to be racing with Davin like that was pretty fun and – I got a lot of respect from most of the guys out there, and it was a super fun race. I can't thank everybody for putting the show on. It was super fun. Even though it was a little rocky, it all uh, it all kind of played out in the end. And, of course, talk about you, you mentioned that it, the Dirt Midgets is something you run, and I know you're, you're most likely familiar with these cars on the iRacing platform, but this combination specifically and just how interesting it is has made it so famous the chili bowl nationals and this track specifically with these dirt midgets uh, walk us through how difficult it is or at least how it changes throughout the night because we had a 50 lap feature it was a pretty long race uh, describe to us what was that biggest takeaway when it came to the track changing all the dynamics that were happening around so towards the beginning of the race you could tell that the track was super tacky i mean they were there the obvious few slick spots but as you get more cars running over them they spread and now you go from one and running, you know, the top and one and two and the bottom and three and four, and now you're just running the bottom. So it's really just how you plan it, and especially with fixed setup, it uh, it didn't let me get out to as large of a lead as normally I can, but it was still super fun. Well, of course, Charlie, it was a lot of fun for you because you're going to be taking $15 home, and you're going to be $15 richer here from the virtual Tosa Expo Arena. Before we let you go, Cody, I know there's – most likely a lot of people you got to thank. So uh, who do you got to thank? Any team, sponsors, or anyone else who decided to give the shout-outs to for tonight's performance? I've got to thank everybody at Tree Tunes Motorsports, you know, putting together a good car. And everybody out in this league and, you know, brazen everybody for helping out. And you guys, you guys did a great broadcast. All right, we certainly appreciate it, Cody. Congratulations on your win tonight. And, of course, we look forward to uh, to seeing you in multiple Derp events. Hopefully we get to cover more of these So and to see you around the iRacing service. So thank you so much for joining us. And once again, congratulations on your victory here tonight. Thank you. That's Cody Gray, your winner here from the virtual Chili Bow Nationals on the work side. We'll slip back to second place where you'll find the number 23 of Ethan Toder. He had a, a struggling run tonight a little bit earlier, but had a very, very strong one. Started fourth, ends up to second. He is sitting trackside with KBRN's Francisco Bacchiao. Uh, oh, Sorry. Uh, Ethan Toder, it's a, a Francisco in the KBRN booth. You got me? Yes, sir. Well, you started in the fourth position, and for the most part tonight, you were able to run inside the top five through most event. Can you take us through that race of yours and kind of summarize what you had to do in order to get this good finish? Well, that concern is my second race. I really didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, running good in the heat race surprised me. Actually staying up front with them guys. Uh, I wasn't with Cody or Cardwell, but we were there battling for third. Um, it wasn't a bad night. I feel like at the end, we might have had something for Cody because I know he got damaged at the end because he jumped the wall. But all in all, it was a good night. Yeah, and can you summarize how the track was the track conditions were changing throughout the night? I know this isn't like most dirt tracks that are typically exposed to the atmosphere. This is inside a building, but despite that, just how much was it changing in these 50 laps from how it was at the start of the races, even in the heats, to how it was at the end of the race? Oh, yeah, I mean, the heat races, uh, I wasn't going to go to the top. Like I said, second race, I didn't want to knock the right rear off and flip and blah, blah, but... 
uh, it just kept changing through the feature. I mean, I started on the bottom, and I know Cody was throwing slider line, and me and Davin were on the bottom, and then it migrated to slider line, and then we all migrated to the top. And at, at the end, I'm pretty sure it was two lanes, bottom and top. But I'm pretty, it went top dominant there probably last 10 laps. Heck of a race, though. Um, yeah. Yeah, and of course, you know, in racing, it's never just one person that's doing all the work. Who do you have to thank, and who do you want to give a shout-out to for helping make the strong P2 effort possible tonight? Oh, I can't thank uh, my new team, uh, DHR. Um, me, Davin, Chase ran this tonight. Uh, all the guys that put this on, you guys putting the broadcast on. Uh, Keltner. Keltner. Uh, Keltner. Wait a second, i got to find this list because I just joined. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, DHR, Zach Newton, TFR, uh, my mom, dad, Eric, all them for watching, and all the guys back there for helping me. We appreciate you taking the time. We we I wish you good luck going forward, and congrats on the strong effort here tonight. Thank you. That was Ethan Toder, your second place finisher in the, the number twenty. Three, we'll step back to third place where you'll find the number 29 of Keith Bradley. Started 10th, moved his way all the way up to third in the main event. We'll bring him in track side and uh, Keith now catching up with you. It was kind of a run through this field. I know you started at kind of the back half of this field in 10th place and you find your way all the way to third. How how was that scenario for you? Because I know not many drivers we see up in this top four have kind of cri crippled their way through the back end of the field and then making their way to the top three at the end of this event. Well, walk us through how that journey was like for you tonight. Well, it was wild. If that's how you want to put it, it was crazy. But I mean, really you just had to be patient. You had to be patient on when you made your moves and how'd you made them. And I mean, it was just, it was wild. I can't believe we went from, I think it was 10th to third. Yeah, it was a wild one. Of course, seven positions up, but nonetheless at a track like this, so short, so clustered and so clogged that you have all the drivers everywhere how did the track feel in this dirt midget because i know a lot of guys think about it differently in terms of what they like when the track wears out and certainly what are the things they kind of find that they wish was better what seemed to be the beneficiary for you on this track as you were getting the hang of it throughout tonight's feature i would think when it when it slicked off it really made the track a little more racing these cars are just hard to drive when they're fixed and they don't want to turn so when it when it slicked up, you could drive it a little harder, and I brought in my real world sprint car knowledge into it. So it it kind of helped pay off because you you had to be easy on the gas, you had to be easy coming out of the corners, and not wheel spin the whole time and lose a bunch of momentum like I did coming out of three or four to the checkered. So I mean it was a lot of fun though. Well, certainly it was a lot of fun watching you out on track, Keith, and of course everybody in these uh, War Chili Bowl Nationals. But before we let you go, uh, I know there's a lot of people you got to thank. So who helps it out for you each and every week? Uh, any team sponsors or anyone you decide to give the shout-outs to for tonight's performance? Well, I'd like to give a big thank you to John Hedrick over at Overtop the Designs. Um, I'm, I drive the dirt midget for him. Um, thank NOS Energy, uh, driven to save lives. Uh, everybody from Brian Cross's family. I'd stay in contact with and help me support my iRacing adventure. Well, Keith, nonetheless, we, we thank you so much for joining us. And, of course, we our congratulations go out to you, a third place finish and the last step of the podium. Surely a very, very solid one. Congratulations on your finish. And, of course, we look forward to, see, to seeing you over on the iRacing side, whether that be through dirt or anywhere else. Uh, we hopefully look forward to seeing you out in the service anytime soon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. That's Keith Bradley, your third place finisher here tonight from the Chili Bowl Nationals. We'll step back to what might be our final interview. Actually, not going to be our final interview. Chris Brown was in it, the, the waiting room for a little bit. It seems as though he has already left. So I believe that will cap things off for our interviews here at the virtual Chili Bowl Nationals. Francisco, I'll turn back over to you here. And what a night here, exactly. Of course, a night that we really didn't expect to be how it was, especially since the fact that we've never covered Dirt Midget's and the Chili Bowl, we've never covered this kind of caliber event on the Cable and Racing Network. However, it certainly was a lot of fun. Had a lot of action on track. A lot of flips also as well. But nonetheless, a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, I, I enjoyed my time covering this. You know, I've, I've, I've come to grown liking dirt racing. I never really watched much of it in, in real life. I've never really watched that much races. I come from a different 
perspective on racing, I, I guess you could say so. But this has definitely brought an attention to it that I never had before. And it's really made me enjoy it, you know, watching it on iRacing, covering the AMB Outdoor Quick Time Series. So the Dirt Midgets here tonight definitely was something fun to watch. It's a different side of the dirt that I'm used to watching. So it was definitely some fun to watch something different, seeing how different aspects were playing out, a different racetrack than what we've seen, and just different drivers, you know. At whenever you sum up these different things, you're going to see something nice and something good from these drivers who will who practice and do this sort of stuff more often than other recognizable names that we've seen. So it's it was definitely a breath of fresh air, and it was definitely an enjoyable night. And I just want to say... Uh, th a big thank you to everybody who joined us here tonight for watching this event. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this event. I know the real life um, Chili Bowl is going on right now. So we appreciate if you're taking the time of watching this version of the Chili Bowl, the Warp Series Chili Bowl. So we, I, I send a big thanks to everybody who's watching and still watching. Yeah, of course, obviously with the real life Chili Bowl, it was going to kind of conflict in some way or the other. So whether you tuned in to the real Chili Bowl and you kind of turned over to us as kind of a maybe a, a factor to get to watch the chili bowl uh we certainly didn't bring the real chili bowl but the virtual chili bowl we hope you all enjoyed it to the maximum amount and we had a lot of fun here tonight up in the booth and obviously that'll wrap things up for our broadcast here of the work chili bowl nationals from the k1 on racing network big thank you to racing collins and all the officials who make things happen on the work side and of course to each and every one of you watching here tonight in the youtube chat whether you chatted or whether you just stick around for a couple minutes or throughout the entire feature, we appreciate you very, very much. And, of course, we appreciate all the support. Coming up on KBRN, we've got a lot coming up in the next coming week, and that'll start tomorrow night at 8.20 p.m. Eastern. It'll be Sunday Night NASCAR, the Davis Brothers Roofing Cup Series, as they move to the Texas Motor Speedway, and they try to find out which of the four drivers will make it in to the championship four that'll coverage of course we'll have charlie Byer and francisco bacchial on the call then monday night with a double header starting with some sprint car action in the mb outdoors quick time sprint car series they'll go live for their martin luther king jr memorial day race at lanier that'll most likely go live at about 7 p.m eastern however we'll let you know an update whether anything changes and of course at 8 20 p.m eastern we'll have coverage of the first playoff race of the iRacing Bunge and Lawn Care Series in Season 3. It will be live from the tricky Charlotte Roval. That'll coverage will begin right here on the Cable and Racing Network at that time. And Charlie Byer and I will be on the call for that as well. Throughout the week, we'll update you whether anything changes or whether any events will be added through our Instagram at Cable and Racing Network or through our Twitter at KBR Network. You can follow those two to keep up to date on everything K10 Racing Network. So for all of us here at the K10 Racing Network, for Charlie Byer, who usually does the production for our calls, and for my colleague in the booth, Francisco Bacchial, my name is Kenneth Bueno saying good night from the Tulsa Expo Center. Hopefully you enjoy the real life Chili Bowl Nationals. We'll be actually watching those as well, but we thank you so much and good night.